Okay, welcome everyone. Let's begin. Today we're going through two H derivatives of the trigonometry functions. I'll just point out where we are. So we're in week five. We're going through exercise 2H. It's the penultimate exercise, our second to last one. Tomorrow we're going to go through 2I. That's a short exercise. It's called second derivatives. And as you might imagine, we've got a function, you differentiate it, and then we just sure. differentiate it again. So that's what we're covering tomorrow, and we will begin our revision tomorrow. So we'll get our split double, we'll do 2i in the first half, and we'll start to address some revision in the second half. And we've got Sports Day Friday, so we'll miss that lesson. Come back, we've got these two lessons of revision leading up to a test on Friday. Now, I won't have a formal formative test. If you want to sit in under test conditions, you're very welcome to. Like we can, you can do that within the class or within your own study lines. But I think the best use of our revision time is to maximise my presence to you by um, addressing common questions and going through so forth together. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow when we start our revision. But that's our plan. Any questions about that? So Friday 7 and 8, it's a 70 minute test. Um, it's all written and ready to go. Okay, so we'll get straight in here. We've got two H derivatives of trigonometric functions. We've got all of these rules we're going to use. All right, so here we just have, we have sine of x, the derivative is cos. Here we have cos, the derivative is negative sine. Okay, and then over here we have a composite function, so that if I have sine of a function of x, that's the derivative that's going to follow. So let's get in directly into these applications of it. We have in part A, y equals x squared take 2 sine x. There's nothing we need to do here. We're going to differentiate this all in one step. We differentiate term by term. So the first term we differentiate will be 2x. And then over here, that 2, that's just going to hang out because it's 2 times sine x. And then we go, all right, what's the derivative of sine x? Sine x goes to cos x. So that's what we're going to write in here. All right, it's 2 times the derivative of sine x. Yeah. The derivative of sine x is cos x. Okay, so that's uh, question A. Let's move on to B. Here we have ln of 3x squared multiplied by sine of the square root of x. So this is absolutely a product rule. We have u multiplied by v. So we can see our rules compounding, and we have a logarithmic function here as well. So we we'll define u nice and clearly, ln of 3x squared. And our v then is sine of x to the power of a half. So straight away I'm expressing it in a form ready for us to differentiate. Okay, so we can recap derivatives of logarithmic functions. If we have ln of f of x, the derivative will be f dash of x on the top of f of x. Alright, so this 3x squared will go to 6x at the top. 3x squared at the bottom. And it could be simplified, right? We have x's at the top, we have 3 as a common number as well, but we don't need to remember differentiating without simplifying. Alright, so that's our u dash. Now, for our v dash, look, we have sine of a function of x, sine of f of x. So we're going to be using this rule over here, sine of f of x, the derivative will be f dash of x cos of f to x. So we have sine of x to the half. The derivative of x to the half is half x to the minus half. That's the first part. That's the f dash of x. And then multiplied by cos of f to x. Okay. f dash of x cos of f to x. So that part's always staying the same. The trig ratio is going to change. And then we've got that derivative of what's inside the brackets out front. Very good. Then we'll just smash that together using the product rule, u dash v. So I'll make sure we use the same notation they provided us with. f of x goes to f dash. u dash v. Plus u v dash. B. 
Very good. On to C, we have cos of ln of x. So we have cos of a function of x. Cos of a function of x. So that means this is going to be our derivative. So we have minus f dash of x out the front. So that means our derivative here. Now when you look at that, it's not, it's not the product rule. Be careful, I have seen some kids in the past do that. It's not cos times ln of x, it's cos of ln of x. We're performing a function to the ln of x. Alright? We're performing an operation. So we have cos of ln of x, and the, the derivative of ln of x is 1 on x. Alright? So f, um, and we've got cos, it's going to be negative 1 on x out front. Alright, so that's the first part. And then multiplied by sine of f of x. Okay, so f of x, f of x, the trig ratio is changing, and we have the derivative of what's inside the brackets, outside the front. Very good. So that's C. Then on to D, we have tan of f of x. Alright, so here's our rule for tan of a function of x. We put the derivative of the function at the top on cos squared of the function at the bottom. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x and cos squared of e to the x at the bottom. Now just if I can talk about this notation quickly, what that means, cos squared of e to the x, how we should think about it, is it's cos of e to the x and then whatever that value is to squared. It's just that this is the correct way to notate it. You won't be penalised if you were to write that as a denominator or anything, that's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, that's what it means. Okay, really good. Happy with derivatives of trigonometric functions. That's our plan today. Let's crack with this exercise. Let's get uh, crack a lacking.